crude oil prices are higher this morning. In fact, at 118.67 a barrel, European Union leaders agreed to cut a big chunk of Russian oil imports by the end of the year. You've got China easing some COVID restrictions, opening up the world. Joining us now once again is Jeff Curry, Goldman Sachs Global Head of Commodities Research. So, so Jeff, we got this deal yesterday with the EU that ship borne, so coming in on a super tanker, mm -hmm. uh, sales of Russian crude will be, what, phased out now, except for Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and uh, Slovakia, because they need the pipeline. It's a little complicated. What's your take on the deal and what it will mean for global markets? Um, you know, it's significant. You know, it adds to an already extraordinarily tight market with low inventories, no spare capacity. So it just creates more upside price risk. Now, but let's be careful about, you know, what they're phasing is. And it's not the full extent of the 4.5 million barrels per day that are imported. You know, the initial cut is about 750,000 barrels per day. I also want to note that, you know, the concern is that, you know, that pipe um, supplies coming into Central Europe, Hungary, and so far, they're very vulnerable in some of the noise coming out of Ukraine you know, in the past day or two suggest, you know, that's even those supplies are vulnerable to a self-imposed embargo. So, you know, I think that the key message here is, you know, this market was already extraordinarily tight before the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Now with these embargoes on top of it, um, you know, the upside risk is significant. We you know our target's 125, but when we look at where product prices are trading, it's an equivalent of 140 already. So, you know, the upside, just closing the gap between products and crude gets you up to somewhere around 140. So, you know, the upside risk around our 125 target is enormous. Products, meaning refined products. In some ways, I'm yeah. assuming, Jeff, and correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, you could make the case, and we kind of made this analogy two weeks ago, and it was imperfect, but I was trying to make a point that, you know, with diesel fuel in Europe and parts of the U.S., you could say it's a $300 barrel oil, right? Yeah, because absolutely. Jet fuel, di diesel, all of that. Yeah, and Becky asked the right question earlier, which is, Europe's doing this, which is great to get rid of this oil. That, <laughs> where's the oil coming from? Is it, are, can we make up the gap? I mean, they, they, they're going to need petroleum products unless they have a massive demand slowdown. Yeah, and, and you know, our estimates is you're going to lose at the wellhead 2 million barrels per day of Russian um, output. So we were True. already in a market that did not have spare capacity. Now you're just going to lose that much more because where are they getting the two million a day? Where's that coming from? It's going to have to come out of demand, which means you're going to have to see higher prices forcing more demand destruction in the system. But every government around the world is stepping up to protect their consumers, which means the price at which you get that demand destruction is going to be substantially higher from here.